All right, hello everyone. Welcome. Hello to everyone who's here. Hello to everyone watching out in Facebook land. Uh, I'm Dean Knight. I'm the education coordinator here. I'm also in charge of all these uh, Sunday readings. And uh, before we move on to that, I want to introduce you all to where we are right now. Uh, first of all, we are in the Enchanted Garden here at the Poe Museum. Uh, when this museum opened in 1922, uh, there were two components of it, and only two, the old stone house and this garden. And this garden was designed, uh, landscaped with post poetry in mind. Uh, the founders of this museum read through his poems. They picked out references to plants and flowers and objects, things that are mentioned in the poems, and they incorporated them into the landscaping of the garden. And they paid uh, special attention to one poem in particular called To One in Paradise. And To One in Paradise is found within one of Poe's stories. It's a very dark story called The Assignation. The first few lines are, Thou wast that all to me, love for which my soul did pine, a green isle in the sea, love, a fountain and a shrine, all wreathed with fairy fruits and flowers, and all the flowers were mine. So this is the green isle stretching out here. The fountain is right there. We are within the shrine, which was constructed out of the bricks of the Southern Literary Messenger, which is where Poe had his first job four blocks down the street. So the shrine is a really special and unique place to do the kinds of things that we do in it, uh, where we have readings of Poe's work, uh, talks about Poe's work. And uh, I'm particularly interested in the program we're doing today. Uh, this, uh, Our next speaker is a longtime friend of mine and a colleague of mine, Debbie Phillips. Uh, she is the Programs and Rentals Coordinator here at the Poe Museum, and she's going to be performing for us. Uh, and I haven't seen this program myself, so I'm actually really excited to see it. Uh, she's going to be performing uh, songs from Eliza Poe's repertoire. And, and quickly, uh, before uh, I, I let her take over, Eliza Poe was Poe's biological mother, and I think she's going to tell us all about that. But she was a touring actress who would go up and down the East Coast uh, performing as an actress and as a singer. And so I, I think I'll let Debbie tell us all about that and sing some songs. So, Debbie? <clears throat> Hello. Thank you all for being here today. I appreciate it. Hello, world. Um, as Dean said, I oversee programs and rentals here, so if you're looking for a space to have a party or a wedding, call me. Um, <laughs> Eliza, Edgar's mother, is the vehicle by which I came back to Poe. And studying her, she became a bit of a hero of mine. Uh, she, I do various living history characters, but she was my first one. And I do do a full program where I'm completely in costume. There will be a program here in Richmond on September the 28th at the Masonic Hall over on Franklin Street, which is the oldest Mason's Hall in the country, still being used. And it's alleged that she gave her last performance there. So. When I do my full program, I tell her whole life story in person, first character. Um, but I'll briefly summarize her life for you before I start singing some of the songs that she was most famous for. Um, she's a fascinating lady. She was born in England. Her parents were actors in the Covent Garden Theater. Uh, she and her mother came to the States when she was about eight. Her father had died some years before, and she began performing almost immediately. Uh, soon she was performing up and down the East Coast, as he said, a traveling actress. Uh, they called her a brilliant gym in the theatric crown here in Richmond, which is one of my favorite reviews. Um, she was married uh, in Alexandria, actually, at the age of 15 to another actor in the troupe named Charles Hopkins. He died three years later, leaving her a widow at the age of 18, and they had no children together. Not long after his death, she remarried another actor named David Poe Jr., who was from Baltimore and didn't have quite the skills on the stage that she had. He had stage fright, he stammered, he stuttered, people threw stuff at him, it wasn't good. Um, they had two children, two boys, in Boston, and then he will desert the family in New York City. And to this day, we don't know what happened to Edgar's dad. Uh, she will continue to perform. She's expecting her third child. She'll give birth in Virginia to a little girl, and then her health will rapidly decline, and she'll die of consumption, or tuberculosis, as we know it today here in Richmond on the 8th of December in 1811, leaving behind these three little children. Edgar was not yet three years old. He probably would have watched his mother wasting away from this terrible disease. And I think that, safe to say, I think that affected his psyche, honestly. Um, she was only 24 years old, and she's buried up at St. John's Church. So if you're ever up in Churchill learning about Patrick Henry, go visit Eliza's grave. She's got a beautiful monument there. Uh, so I'll be singing a selection of songs uh, that she was most famous for. The first one being the one she uh, actually was featured in the American Masters documentary that came out about a year and a half ago, Nobody Coming to Marry Me. And they said that she performed to unbounded applause in the Boston Theater. 
I don't expect the same here. <laughs> <laughs> Last night the dogs did bark. I went to the gate to see when every lass had her spark, but nobody came to me. And it's oh dear, what will become of me? Oh dear, what shall I do? Nobody coming to marry me. Nobody coming to Nobody coming to My father's a hedger and ditcher. My mother does nothing but spin. And I'm a pretty young girl, but the money comes slowly in. And it's, oh dear, what will become of me? Oh dear, what shall I do? Nobody coming to marry me. Nobody coming to. Nobody coming to. They say I'm beauteous and fair. They say I'm scornful and proud. And no one now I must despair, for I am growing old. And it's, oh dear, what will become of me? Oh dear, what shall I do? Nobody coming to marry me. Nobody coming to woo. Nobody coming to woo. And now I must die an old maid. Oh dear, how shocking the thought. And all my beauty must fade. But I'm sure it is not my fault. And it's, oh dear, what will become of me? Oh dear, what shall I do? Nobody coming to marry me. Nobody coming to woo. favorites of her songs. It's very sweet. To be clear, when I say her songs, these are not songs that she composed. They were composed sometimes for her or just famous songs of the period, which to remind you is late 18th century, early 19th century. This one is called Drink to Me Only With Thine Eyes. Drink to me only with thine eyes and I will pledge with mine. Or leave a kiss within the cup, and I'll not ask for wine. The thirst that from the soul doth rise, doth ask a drink divine. But might I of Job's nectar sup, I would not trade for thine. I sent thee late a rosy wreath, not so much honoring thee as giving it a hope that there it could not withered be. But thou thereon didst only breathe, and since did back to me, since when it Rose and smells, I swear, not of itself, but thee. We have to compete with airplanes. <laughs> this next one is a rather sad song that sounds very happy, as was common. The Last of the Lake, about a poor lady who dies young. Again, a common theme of Poe's works. At the foot of yon mountain where all water plays, the thirst of the peasant to slake. A damsel so lovely enlivened our days, and we call her the lass of the lake. A damsel so lovely enlivened our days, and we call her the lass of the lake. The little god Cupid invaded her breast, such aim it was cruel to take. In the white garb of truth the deceiver was dressed, who betrayed the sweet lass of the lake. 
In the white garb of truth, all of you see who was dressed, who betrayed the sweet lass of the lake. A false one imposed on simplicity's child, she thought he but lived for her sake. He wedded another, poor Lucy went wild, and she ended her days in the lake. He wedded another, poor Lucy went wild, and she ended her days in the lake. By moonlight her form has been said to appear, while sweethearts by love kept away. Repair to the spot and shed sympathy's tear, for the poor ruined lass of the lake. Repair to this spot and shed sympathy's tear or the poor ruined lass of the lake. This next one, The Day of Marriage, is one which she performed not long after her first marriage to Charles Hopkins, and evidently the audience thrilled to it because they knew these two actors had had an interest in one another. Twas on the 21st of June in charming summer weather, when Harry told his tender boon that we might live together. T'was on the 21st of June in charming summer weather, when Harry told his tender boon that we might live together. I first said yes and then said no, and he each answer parried, at length the twelfth month proved it so. The day that we were married, oh sweetest day in all the year, the day that we were married, oh sweetest day in all the year, the day that we were married, the day that we were married, oh sweetest day in all the year. The day that we were married. Three years have passed in mutual bliss, so maidens do not tarry. A single life is sure a miss, so I advise to marry. Three years have passed in wedded bliss, so maidens do not tarry. A single life is sure a miss, so I advise to marry. For was the time to come again? To church I would be carried, and truly bless the happy day. The day that we were married, oh sweetest day in all the year, the day that we were married, oh sweetest day in all the year, the day that we were married, the day that we were married, oh sweetest day in all the year, the day that we were married. This next one is quite sad. Um, when I'm performing my full program, I intersperse these songs throughout her monologue to better tell her story. And this is the one which I always perform when I'm speaking about her husband, David, deserting the family in New York City, leaving her alone with two little boys. It's called Henry's Cottage Maid. Oh, where can fly my soul's true love? Sad I wander this long road. Sighs and tears for him I shed. Henry's from Laura fled thy love. Love to me, thou didst impart. Thy love soon won my virgin heart. But dearest Henry, thou be 
betrayed, my love, with thy poor cottage made, through the veil my grief appears, sighing sad with of thy image is my theme as I wander over the green see from my cheek the color flies and love's sweet hope within me dies. For, O oh, dearest Henry, thou betrayed thy love with thy poor cottage maid. Now, the next song, and the last song, for now, uh, is <laughs> one which I, it's her very first song that we know of that she sang in this country. She was nine years old when she sang this, and her reviewers said that her powers were astonishing and would do justice to any of her sex of a more mature age. And it's a weird song. It's an <laughs> odd song. It was written in 1796. And um, it, it's called The Market Last, and it has some fun moments, so bear with me. Though my dad, I must own, is but poor, his cot can each comfort supply. The vine tendril curls round his door, and stream that's meander anigh. The vine tendril curls round his door, and stream that's meander anigh. Health reigns and rewards daily toil. I rise with the lark's early song, and meeting my swain at the stile, to market we trip it along. To market we trip it, we trip it along. To market we trip it along. Sweet scented as blossoms in May, butter prints mighty fast over spread, milk white chickens, cream cheese I display, and I'll vouch every egg is new laid. Milk white chickens, cream cheese I display, and I'll vouch every egg is new laid. To partake in my health earning toil, my swain holds it never can be wrong. There's the weight of my load with a smile. As to market we trip it along. To market we trip it, we trip it along. To market we trip it along. Arrive soon, I purchaser's view. Sell my stock very often in a trice. Reap the produce to industry do. But I never charge above market price. <laughs> Rip the produce to industry new, but never charge above market price. Returning the way we beguile with a tale or a joke or a song. Snatch a warm parting kiss at the stile, then to my cot I trip it along. To market we trip it, we trip it along. To market we trip it along. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate your support. I hope that you have enjoyed yourselves today. And if you have not yet taken a tour of the museum, I believe one will be available at one o'clock with this fine genius gentleman here, Dean Knight. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day.